So, the transverse complete field profile are these two. So, you have you said psi r phi where is this coming from you said r it is a product of r a function of r and phi a function of phi of which phi a function of phi you already said it is either cos phi cos l phi or sin l phi. Now, r a function of r this is the solution in the core and that we are saying is j function in the core and k function in the cladding. So, j l u r of r by a and k l w r by a. Uh, why w? Because in the cladding the corresponding parameter is w. Um, this of course, is a constant. Do you agree? Is this a constant? I can tell you that a is a constant. j l u and k l w is that constant or not a constant? Once I have picked the mode, remember what your u was root of k naught square n 1 square minus beta square. Once I know my mode, I know my beta and once I know my beta, so u is a constant, but at the moment I do not know what that beta is, but for different modes I know that betas are different. Okay. So, this is a constant you will realize in a minute why we need this peculiar constant sitting here and uh, what are the parameters that needs to be determined now. Do we know the capital R function? I do not. So, so you when you start a fiber, start with a fiber, what are the parameters that you know? You know n 1, you know n 2, you know the core radius, then you know the lambda. Okay. And so, these are your input fiber parameters. What else do you know? Do you know anything about L? You know that L can take 0, 1, 2, etcetera. I should try out for L equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera. What else do you know? Do I know uh, u value at this moment? I do not know because I do not know beta, but I know that if I know beta, I can calculate this u value and similarly w I do not know. Do I know this a constant? That also I do not know. Right. So, these are your unknowns and you should be able to calculate all these unknowns for each value of L and somehow they should get connected to this. Somehow they should get connected to the n 1, n 2, a and lambda of the fiber. Right. So, this is the big agenda that we have, but it is not very difficult uh, because now we start applying our boundary conditions. What is the first boundary condition? The solution must be continuous. Last time we discussed that it is not a metallic waveguide, it is a dielectric waveguide. So, from the core to the cladding, the electric field, it has to be continuous. So, can you uh, find out if the solution is continuous the way we have assumed? How do you find this? What you write as a solution in the core and what you write as a solution in the cladding must be identical for r equal to a check. This cos l phi sin l phi just means that you have two solutions here, two hidden solutions here, the degenerate solutions, right? one with this multiplied by cos l phi, one with this multiplied by sin l phi. So, there are two equations written here actually. So, now you know why I had a j l u and a j k l w. If you did not have this, they will not be continuous. Okay. So, the boundary condition is uh, satisfied because we have fixed these constants. Of course, A is not known yet. Okay. So, first uh, uh, you know uh, boundary condition that the solutions must be continuous did not give us anything more. You did not you are not able to find out the beta. Right. Idea was to find out the beta. Once I have the beta, I have everything else. Right. So, that did not give you anything else, but it is a second order differential equation. So, you will have you need those two boundary conditions to find your exact solution. Okay. So, which is that second boundary condition? So, the second boundary condition we are going to impose is that the not only the solutions, but their first derivatives should also be continuous. Now, why would the first derivatives be continuous? 
if the first derivative is discontinuous, then what will happen to the second derivative? At the point of discontinuity, what will happen? Let us say my uh, d psi by uh, dr is uh, discontinuous as a function of r. Let us imagine that it got discontinuous, it was something like this and it got discontinuous uh, at the boundary and it became like this. Okay. This is d psi by dr at the boundary. Let us say it was discontinuous. Can I not have a function like this? But if I do this, what happens to d square psi by dr square at the boundary? That becomes undefined or we say anything undefined, we uh, of course, we can do a delta function approximation and say that the differential becomes a delta function, second differential becomes a delta function. Now, can I have second differential as a delta function because in my second order differential equation? I can have it only if my n is a delta function uh, there, but n is not a delta function. There is a very finite step. It is not an infinite uh, n change. So, the first derivative of the solution must be continuous at the boundary. Okay. Okay, work it out. What is the first derivative? First derivative with respect to what? With respect to r or with respect to phi? You are talking about r function. So, the first derivatives are with respect to r. So, what is the differential first derivative of this will give you at r equal to a. So, this just becomes u cos l phi sin l phi is all constant. So, that is the same for both. So, it is just the derivative of j l prime which is derivative of j l which is j l prime let us call it as this is also a constant and here you have a derivative of uh, k l uh, k l here on the right side. So, you will get something like and because you are differentiating with respect to r you will have to uh, take your u outside right. I mean what is the differential of this function? It is u by a times j l prime u r by and here you will have again w by a times k l prime w r by a. Of course, r equal to a. So, this will go away and this a is common here that will go away and of course, you had this a divided by k l w here and here you had a divided by j l w uh, j l u right. Why am I treating all these as constants? They are all constants with respect to r. So, if I try to equate this now, I will have a cancelling out. Uh, you have u times this and uh, w times this in the denominator, right. Well, prime indicates first derivative. Now, it is not very straightforward to make use of this if you do not know certain identities involving Bessel functions. So, these are uh, some useful identities with Bessel functions. Uh, there is a relation between j l prime and j l. In fact, the first derivative of Bessel function is related to the Bessel function itself minus uh, j l depending on whether this is plus you have this as plus. So, essentially I can write u times j l prime u is equal to l times j l u minus u times j l plus 1 u. These are can be independently proved for Bessel functions. So, this j l prime u I can replace with this. Similarly, this k l prime w can be replaced from here and I substitute it here. So, this is just algebraic substitution and you can believe me here that this is what you will get. So, essentially I am able to write the first derivative with respect to the Bessel function itself and uh, what will happen is actually you have two terms and you are dividing it by j l u. So, this cancels. So, you will end up with only l and here again similarly you will end up with an l. So, that minus l. The, so, you can work it out. The first term uh, the same term appears. So, you will have a minus or a plus 
plus L here and another plus L here because of this term and those two will cancel out. So, you will have only something involving J L plus 1 or J L minus 1 and similarly K L plus 1 and K L minus 1. So, this is the solution we have u times j l minus 1 u by j l u is minus w times k l minus 1 w by k l w and for l equal to 0 what happens this is u times j minus 1 u and k times uh, sorry w times k minus 1 w and there is a relation between j minus 1 and j 1 and k minus 1 and k 1. So, I use this identity also. So, that for L equal to 0, I have this relation for L greater than uh, equal to uh, 1, I have this relation. This is what I need to solve now. What did I? So, how did I arrive at this? I got this equation by imposing the second boundary condition and I got two equations which means Remember, I have to solve for u and w for all possible values of L. I know that my L can exist from 0, 1, 2, I can have any azimuthal quantum number. For each of those, I need to find out what the beta is. And to find beta, I need to find out what my u and w is. And to find u and w, I have, I am left with this uh, transcendental equation. So, I have one equation for every value of L. Why do I call it as a transcendental equation? It is an equation where it is like an equation like tan x equal to x. How do you solve this equation? Can I do x is equal to tan inverse x? The left side and the right side has the same variable right. I mean I'm, I, so such equations are transcendental equation. So, how do you solve these kind of equations? You either do a numerical method or you plot both are actually the same. So, what you do is you keep x as your variable, you plot your left hand side and you plot your right hand side and the left hand side and right hand side will meet at one point or many points and those are your solutions. Okay. So, this is a transcendental equation in u and w. So, you will have to basically plot for, so let us say for example, we are calculating for L equal to 0. We have to plot J L for different values of u, the left hand side and then k right hand side for different values of w. Uh, is it possible to arrive at a solution like that? If it was tan x equal to x kind of uh, equation, we can say as a function of x, we can plot the left hand side and the right hand side. But it turns out that the left hand side is a function of u and the right hand side is a function of w. So, how do I now look at the point of intersection? My x axis itself is changing for two plots. So, this is not going to work. You need to do a little bit more work. You need to make sure that the left hand side and the right hand side is a function of the same variable before you can solve the transcendental equation. You have to get it to this form where the left hand side is a function of a variable, right hand side is another function of a variable. Then if it is the variable is the same, then you can plot the LHS and plot the RHS and find out the value of x. As of now, it is not. Left side is a function of u, right side is a function of g a function of w, but both has beta in it through a different form. So, you have to kind of and, and it is that beta that you are trying to uh, calculate. Okay. So, the easier way of uh, doing this is to convert this transcendental equation into a transcendental equation which is explicitly in only one variable. 